why don't you talk about what you gained from all the experience you had last season, what you learned, how you're a better quarterback than you were at this time last year? Um, yeah, I think just for me personally, it's been just being able to recognize defenses. Um, that's like one of the biggest parts of this whole offense is being able to understand what defense a team is in and uh, what plays are best against it. And I think this year uh, I was able to see a lot of different uh, defenses thrown at me, um, definitely compared to just being on scout team. So I think just going into going into this spring ball, it's a lot more confidence in uh, my understanding of the offense and understanding of just uh, what plays are best against certain defenses. Um, you, you grew up a lot in the Army Navy game. Coach even referenced that yesterday just the way you played, the confidence you showed. You threw the ball effectively. You ran hard. You you made you know plays and you didn't make mistakes. Uh, how important was that game in particular? Because there's no more pressure filled game than Army Navy. And if you can perform in that environment, it speaks volumes. How much confidence does what happened in that game give you going forward? Um, it's a, I mean, it's a tre tremendous amount of confidence it gives us, but I think just like for that game, it was, it was mainly like just going, letting the seniors go out on a, on a high note. I mean, I know the year before it was a tough, it was a, a tough loss to them at their place. And it was like all this, the amount of effort and time that, that seniors put into, uh, like building us and stuff. I felt like there was only like, you had to play your heart out for them and you had to, uh, just try to do everything you in your power to come out with a win. Um, and I mean, once we did, it was probably the best feeling being able to see, everyone with smiles rather than their head down. So it was definitely a great feeling. And last for me, before I pass it off to John or Phil or whomever, um, what do you want to work on this spring? What are some of the, I know you've talked to Coach Jasper and Coach Nehemiah. What are some of the um, focus points for you during spring ball? Um, I'd say the major, like physically, probably uh, running. Just, I mean, that's always a thing. You got to be, try to be more explosive. Um, but just overall being a better leader. I mean, I know um, there, I know we don't have as many seniors this year. We lost a lot of seniors, lost a lot of captains um, and vocal leaders on the team. So I feel like just trying to step up and um, become a better leader for the offense and just the team in general uh, is a big point that I want to make this spring, so. Let's go to uh, John Scofio to get three. Hey, Ty. So obviously some news in the quarterback room this spring uh, with Xavier playing on the lacrosse team. So it begs the question, when are you going to try out for, uh, you know, Ed DeCellis' basketball team? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in all seriousness, Ty, like what, what does that say to you about the athleticism in the quarterback room? Like what you've seen from your teammate, you know, the, you know, since he arrived as a number one lacrosse recruit, but also a pretty darn good quarterback, are you at all surprised at what you're seeing him do out on the lacrosse field right now, scoring goals and starting already? No, not at all. I mean, I think everyone on the football team was actually, everyone was confused at first when they found out he was playing lacrosse, but everyone was super excited to see him play because they knew how, how talented he was in both fields of play. Um, and I mean, I know for me, it was like I was waiting until he got until he got healthy to be able to play, so I could go see his first game. But we had spring break over that time, uh, so I know whenever they do play their next game and he's playing, I'm definitely going to go out and watch because I mean he's just an exciting athlete to watch in general. I mean he and he's a great dude too, so I mean he's all around. It's all around cool to watch. So yeah, we like that too. So I have to ask you, Wags asked you a little bit about what you're going to work on in spring ball. You know, since you walked away as the winning quarterback in the Army Navy game to now the beginning of spring football, where do you think you've evolved? You know, you talked about, you know, doing better in the classroom. What else have you improved upon as you're emerging from the dark ages, you know, here at the very early stages of your career at the Naval Academy? Um, I think just maturing. Um, I think it's it's easy to kind of like take it as like, like use an excuse as you're a young person, like young kid in the academy. And uh, like, if you make a mistake, it's just because you're young, you don't have that much experience. Um, and I feel like I really, that's not an excuse. I'm like, I can play, like use that as a card now because I've played most of the season. Um, so I feel like just maturing and understanding like my role uh, is like a big thing for me because I think last year was kind of just a backseat. I was playing, but just not really uh, trying to be as vocal with everything. Uh, and I feel like now it's kind of just like trying to step up into that quarterback role that uh, the Navy quarterback usually is, so. And last for me, you know, we asked coach yesterday about the schedule, um, you know, since the Army Navy game was played and now we're talking uh, today, one of the big changes is that you know who you're playing next year. And, 
you know, coach made reference to the fact that the schedule ended last year in the top 10 hardest in the nation. This one coming up doesn't look all that much easier. Does that reinforce for you that as a quarterback, you're playing in an elite conference when you see those big games on the schedule? Does it make, does it reinforce the fact that you're playing big time football? Yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, it was, uh, I kind of was, I, I mean, it's a tough schedule, but at the same time, we lost a lot of those games that we should have won. Uh, so for me, it's been like, it's a reinforcer that we get another shot at it and to prove ourselves that uh, those games that we did lose last year, we could have won and we can come back and do it this year. So, I mean, it's definitely cool to see it, see those teams you like Cincinnati, who's the top two for most of the year last year. Um, but at the same time, it's also something that we want to get back to and uh, get our record the way it wants to be, so. Thanks, Ty. Yeah. Bill Bergman. Hi, uh, watching the tape of yourself from last year, what did you like, what did you not like about what you played, what you want to work on? Um, I think at times uh, I kind of just, I kind of uh, just like run, I think, I mean, just like I said, like I want to work on running and stuff. Uh, I feel like at times I wasn't as effective at running as I should have been. I feel like I could have kept my feet um, better. Um, I mean, I, I feel like my knowledge of the game in triple option offense uh, was probably like the thing that I, uh, felt the most strongly about in my performances, uh, just kind of understanding each game, like more and more what it needs to be done um, on the like X's and O's parts of it. Um, but I think, yeah, just overall, like I feel like just being a more effective runner helps the offense in all like sorts of uh, ways. So. There'll be a new center this year. Um, how's your relationship on the field with either Hickson, Self or Moriarty? I mean, I, they're, they're, they were young. I mean, I got to know Hickson a little bit. Uh, I know Self um because his brother a little talk talk to them not uh, a little bit but um I mean I'm excited I mean we, I know they're they're young so I'm excited to kind of like build uh over these next couple of years with them um and I mean I know they're, they're they look like right now over the first day of practice it looked like it was going really well it looked like we really didn't miss a beat um at least from my point of it um so I mean I'm excited to work with them I'm excited to to start this new year with them and uh, at slot backs, you have Kai and Mikel. You had a nice touchdown pass last year. Uh, to Kai, what's your relationship like with the two of them? Uh, Kai's, yeah, Kai's, I don't know. Kai's in the quarterback room right now. So he's uh, he's playing quarterback with us right now. Uh, but Mikel, I mean, he's, uh, he's going to be a great athlete for us. Uh, I mean, you saw him last year, pump kick returning and all that stuff. I mean, to me, I always tell he looks like Saquon Barkley with his, his thighs. So, I mean, like. I'm excited to see what he can do this year. And, and I mean, all the other A-backs, I mean, we got Vince back and D Jones and all of them. So I'm really excited for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Go back to WAGS. We're, we're open to, you know, ask what you need. Well, uh, in terms of, you know, how you approach spring camp, I know you won't be getting tackled. So, you know, like you talked about working on running the ball, but you don't, kind of know for sure what you runs you might have broken because as soon as you get touched up it's over blue whistle mm -hmm. blow. so how, how do you kind of judge how you're improving uh, I mean I think for me I can kind of like feel when I, I feel more mobile um I know like there's been moments where I've like when I've been running I've been like I haven't felt like too like strongly in how I was cutting or how my legs are so I feel like just like feeling better about my cutting capabilities and all that stuff uh, is something that I can feel without having to get hit. And I mean, like, I'm, I'm like a big thing that we were talking about was being able to go full speed still and like not just because I'm not getting hit, like doesn't mean I just like slowly run through the hole and all this. So still treating it just like a game situation, um, just obviously not getting like tackled to the ground. But I mean, still like, I, like I'm, I'm just going to try to take it all just like a game situation, but just um, let up at the end. But I mean, it's all it's all like game reps for me to try to get it as like in tune as possible for the season. So. So during the all-season conditioning workouts, did was speed, agility drills a big emphasis for you, footwork, et cetera? I think that's always important for a quarterback. And, um, you know, obviously we saw that you are a very strong, effective runner between the tackles. But being a quarterback in Navy, you also want to force the defense to respect your ability on the pitch if you were to keep on the pitch. Um, yeah. What guys like Malcolm and Keenan Reynolds could do out there if uh, teams didn't take the quarterback on the – on the perimeter uh, option. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I think, I mean, for this, the spring workouts, I feel like it was more just getting in shape um, for spring ball. 
Um, spring ball, I think this summer is when we kind of like works on the speed and agility portions of it. I mean, we did do speed stuff during spring, but I feel like summer is where you actually can build yourself to where you want it to be at. Um, so, I mean, I think that's like the, the time when I'm, and we do, we do like position work and all that stuff after our workouts in summer. So I feel like that's the time where you kind of build the most, um, for the upcoming season is during summer. And I mean, the spring ball just kind of helps you understand what you need to work at the most. Um, and then summer's kind of like when you go and fine tune everything. Uh, part like for your own self, um, physically and mentally, and all that. So, so it seemed like toward the end of the season, you finally got fully healthy. I mean, I know you had suffered the injury early on. Um, would you say that's accurate? And, and I would imagine that you're now in tip top condition, in full health going into spring ball. Yeah, I feel probably the best I've felt in a long time. I think Army was probably the, the first game where I was actually feeling uh, really good. Um, since the beginning of the season. And then it just kind of went from there. And then, I mean, I woke up the next morning a little sore, not going to lie. But then uh, then once we had all the time to relax and just take a break, uh, and then spring break obviously helped me get, like, uh, just relax and hang out and stuff. So it definitely feel really good going into spring, like, physically-wise. So kind of attuned to what Phil was asking about getting adjusted to new centers. Also, there's nothing more important than the mesh between the quarterback and the fullback. And you'll be working with some new fellows there because – Last year, you were either handing off to Isaac or James almost all the time. Uh, what's your thoughts on some of these young fullbacks? Uh, Anton Hall, we saw a little bit of last season, uh, but none of the other fellas really got any uh, meaningful time. Um, I don't know. Do you have, do you work on mesh work with the fullbacks during all season workouts? Um, yeah, we do. We do our own thing um, in spring ball. We do a lot of uh, mesh and like hookups with the with the be backs. Just in, like cause that's a huge part. You're right. Is like the feel of it because you don't like when you understand the b-back and where at what point they you know, like to like clamp onto the ball and all that it makes it a lot easier on yourself um and i'm really excited for all like all the b-backs that are playing they're all really athletic and they're finally getting a chance to show it uh in spring ball so i'm really excited to see all them uh i mean mike logan anton they're all kids who like waited their turn and um i'm really excited to see um but that's something that's a big emphasis during spring ball is just getting a feel for the, the mesh because that is a huge point in our triple option is because I mean that's like where the play really starts is between us and the b-back so so last for me I mean you enter as the clear-cut starter I think one of the reasons why coach Niamat is allowing Xavier to play lacrosse is because it was established in the pecking order as to you were the starter and and therefore he thought he you know, could afford to miss spring ball and and be able to catch up in the fall but I don't think you want to have the mindset that, oh, I'm the starting quarterback. Nobody's got a chance other than me. I mean, Masai Maynard is probably pretty darn hungry. It's going to be a senior's last shot. Um, and he's going to get a lot of reps this year with Xavier being out. Coach Nehemiah told us that. What, what, how do you approach that? How do you not get too high on the horse, if you, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, I mean, besides, like, I, I love working with Sai, working out with him. We we try to just make sure each other knows what's going on. Um, I think for me, it's just, I mean, we did beat Army, but I feel like it wasn't a season to boast about. Um, it's something that, like, I feel like even though we did have, like, a good ending to it, it's something that there's, always, like, there's a huge improvement that we can have off of that last season. Um, I feel like that's, like, the thing that's, like, keeping me from, like, keeping me grounded and making me want to do better, like, and making sure every rep that I do is kind of, like for the next season, because I know how hard it is. Like Coach Ken always says, it's hard to win. And I mean, once you like, actually play in it and see it, I mean, it's like it comes down to like one or two plays some games, and it's like you wish you could get those back. And it's like that's why like during spring is probably the most important time to actually like build it, since we have so many young kids this year, be able to actually get a bond with them and see how how each other plays and like get a feel for it. So uh, let's go to John Schofield. Uh, so, Ty, none of the other quarterbacks that are on the schedule uh, for next fall have a summer training plan like you have ahead of you. Uh, you talked about things that you're going to work on individually and athletically over the summer, but you also have a mandated three to four weeks of summer training. Um, that's an advantage the other quarterbacks in the, uh, in the uh, conference and on the non-conference schedule might think they have. You know, we at the podcast think that your summer training actually gives you the advantage. What are you hoping to do during your summer training block? And and when is it? It's usually block zero, right? Yeah. So right now we have it. We're going on like a, a cruise. So somewhere, I don't know. We don't know where we're going yet. Um, but you get stationed. Some, you get to go uh, out to some some place wherever they, they planned you. 
Um, but I'm excited. I think it's it's cool to be able to see do stuff that not a lot of people get to do. I mean, last summer we got to go on heli or go on helicopters, go on planes, stuff that my friends like back home would never think they would be like would, would do. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to get you a chance to be able to like see how uh, different people lead, uh, and then you come back and be able to kind of uh, use it again in the in the football field and kind of be able to like. Uh, you know, just see, just see all like around the world, like what, how people like act. Cause I mean, it's different. It's, it's a lot easier to like get stuck in like one mindset when you're around the same people all the time. Um, and then you actually get to go out there in the fleet and see people who've been doing it for a long time. Uh, and it kind of gets you, gets you different experiences. So. Love the answer. That's it for me. Other than I have to put on the record that you talk about Saquon's thighs. You've never seen Bill Wagner's thighs, Ty. So <laughs> you're missing something. That's it for me. Thanks Scott. Bill Bergman. That's a tough act to follow up on. Uh, <laughs> Ty, um, coaches in the past have talked about uh, what quarterbacks um, you remind them of. Is there a Navy quarterback that you've seen that you think your plays like, or just another quarterback um, in the NFL that you watch and is like, that's who I am like? Um, not. I mean, I think I think honestly, Coach, Coach Jasper always says I feel like Will is probably like the closest thing. Just like our, our kind of style and our like body like makeup, I feel like it's probably the closest to each other um, that I've seen probably. So I feel like it's kind of hard to contribute or like say it to an NFL quarterback just because NFL quarterbacks don't really run as much as we do. So. And then uh, just to get to know you a little better, who are your buddies on the team? Who are the like guys you're closest with that you just hang out with off the field too? Uh, probably Aka Capono. He's from Hawaii. Um, the ju the senior or juniors going to be senior probably like Dan Davies, uh, Jamie Romo, uh, Kip, um, some of the other, I don't, I don't I mean it really just hang out with everyone. I try to just hang out with as many people as possible. I don't really like to like stick stick with like one certain like group. I feel like just being able to get to know everybody kind of helps you just in general. Uh, I'm like a very social person, so I really just whoever if anyone wants to hang out, I hang out with them. So awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wags. Well, one last one for me, Ty, um, throwing the ball. We know you're a very effective passer and you've shown that, but there were times last season when you were inaccurate. Uh, I think of the Temple game. It's toward the end of the year and you miss some open receivers. What, how much focus on that? Because, I mean, I think you have the ability to give Navy a very potent passing attack and, and an element that will keep defenses honest, but you probably do need to improve the accuracy. I don't know if Coach Jasper believes that or not, but – you know, I'm not trying to be critical. No, yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, a big point last spring was kind of just understanding the run part of everything. Uh, I think cause that's, I mean, that's the base of our offense really is running it. Uh, so for me, it wasn't like I threw all of high school. So for me, it was like, all right, well, when I, it comes time to throw, I can just throw it and it'll be perfectly fine. Uh, like I just got to put it in the area. But I feel like this this spring, it's kind of just being able to like make all of my all around game better. And that's, that's true. Like throwing included. Cause I felt like, especially against temple as of that first pass, it just felt like no pass was going the right way, except for like maybe the last the one I threw the chance on for, for the touchdown. But like, other than that, it was like, I, I did become like inaccurate. And like, we've worked on that too, uh, because I always would like end up popping up and then the ball would either go high or low. So like we do some drills where I try to keep my front legs, like have a little bit of like bounce to it. So I'm not just like popping straight up. Um, but that's definitely something that we've talked about working on and, uh, yeah, you're right. I definitely need to become a little more accurate to be a little more effective. So, yeah, the throw to chance for the touchdown was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Before I let you go, I've got one for you. Um, yeah. I know last fall we we talked about uh, Jack Thompson, the th you know the original throwing some yeah. one, and then I saw on on Facebook that he was actually at the Army Navy game, and you got yeah. to meet him. How did that yeah. come about, and and how cool is that? Um, so he actually. How did it go? I think I either I think he DM me or I DM him. So it was one, it was one or the other. Um, and then like he was like, yeah, I need to I want to come to Army Navy game. Uh, you should ask Coach Ken, and because uh, that's like been on his bucket list is to come to Army Navy game. And then he got tickets to it, but he was up in the nosebleeds apparently. And my mom's like, hey, we have extra tickets down here. If you guys want to come down? I think he was with his son and his wife, I think. And um, so they came down and they were just hanging out. With my mom, my brother. Um, and then he stayed for after the game because he wanted to meet me. And it, I mean, it was a pretty cool moment because I mean, it's like that's like the throwing Samoan, and that's what my mom used to always call me. And so, so it was like pretty cool to actually be able to see, like, see and meet him in person. Uh, and I think that we, they became my family and their family became really good friends. So probably 
going to be coming to like the Air Force game and stuff too from, and all that. So it'd be pretty cool. So as you get started for spring, just wondering how, um, how is it different when you have a returning more established guy as opposed to a year where you have more of a competition going? Yeah, it, it, it definitely helps to have a guy that guy back that's been um, as the late favorite basketball player, Corey Bryant would say battle tested. That was his favorite word I used. Having a guy back that's battle tested is definitely a huge plus for us. And I would say yesterday we came out to practice, he was a different kid, leadership, um, flying around, talking to God, you know, getting, getting guys going, firing everybody up. So very, very pleased with, uh, with him right now. So when, you know, Ty is established, but in front of him, you're going to have someone new. Behind him, you're going to have someone new. What's it like to kind of, what do you have to do to kind of build that relationship? And how important is it to get on the same page with both the center and the fullbacks? Well, really, it's, it's just reps, like, like we've always done. But the best teacher is reps. Um, we do a lot of in practice. But I also tell Ty, too, uh, as a quarterback, he has to really, really understand his true role. To be that leader, to be that guy, to, to see all the little things like those relationships you've been talking about with the center and the B-backs, you know, to, to find time on his own to get with those guys and talk to those guys. And that's his job as a quarterback. You got to be that leader, but also the little things, the little, the little extra things, you got to find time to, to get done. So outside of practice and uh, all of our repetition that, that we do with those guys, it's up to Ty to, to, to really, really build that bond. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Uh, let's go to um, Scott Wyckoff. Coach, what did you like best about Ty's play at the end of the season that you want to build on in these weeks that you have with him in the spring? We play smart football. That's, I, I, I've always said that um, in this office as, as a quarterback. You know, obviously, you want to you know, have a dynamic runner, a kid can make a lot of plays, but when it really comes down to it, he can't get you beat. And that's the key. Um, if, if I don't think Ty put the ball on the ground. Well, he had the one fumble against uh, UCF where the guy kind of got his hand around and knocked it out. But just as far as taking care of the football, the kid did a great job of doing that. And I think towards the end of the year, he grew into his own. He took care of the football. He didn't turn it over. But also, he showed some toughness, some tough, some grit. And I think he built on that. Um, and confidence. That's my biggest thing going to the Army game because I obviously didn't, didn't have a great season. But we knew going to that game, you know, if we're going with confidence, you know, that we can win the football game. And, we preached it for the whole two weeks going to the game. We preached it over and over again. And that's the way the team plays, the way he played. So continue to build on that confidence and, and take care of the football and play small football is, is, what, is what I'm looking for. I know every year is different, but in your time at Navy, do you see significant progression in starting quarterbacks when you get from that first season to that second season where you can really start to develop some things? Oh, it's, it's, it's a huge stepping stone for those guys, you know, going, going from that first year to that second year. And I expect Ty to, like yesterday, and again, I, I'll say it again, he's a completely different person in the football field yesterday, just taking control of everything. I mean, he was, again, he's not a very vocal kid. Um, now he's a, he's a happy-go-lucky, fun-loving kid. I mean, he's always smiling, always, you know, playing his music and stuff like that, you know, but he came out there, he was, he was a gym. He came out there with that with a look on his face and he was dialed into everything that we were doing. Um, he was communicating to everybody. Some, I did something wrong. He let them know. So I was very pleased with where he is now. And again, that only comes from having the full season under your belt, but also getting that confidence going to the next season. I'm sure he's going to be huge for us. But he's at that point right now to where, again, we can continue to build going to next year. I'm, I'm excited about it. Now, again, is he there yet? No, he's not. Again, he's still he's still a Jedi. He's not Yoda yet. Or I'm saying that right. I don't want to, I don't want to offend any any um Star Wars guys. <laughs> Even though I did watch it, I watched all of them, and I do love it, you know, but but he hasn't gotten there yet. But again, I'm very pleased with his progression. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, my man. Wags. Good to see you, Ivan. So um, you, man. what are some of the things you want Ty to work on in spring ball? We just talked to Ty, and he talked about, you know, footwork and, and getting better at the perimeter game. Um, you know, he obviously further honing his option and ability all around ball mm -hmm. handling. What, what, anything in particular that as you do the cutups from last season, you're showing him this is what has to improve going into next season? No, 
Ty throws the football very well. Um, mechanic wise, option wise, he's he's pretty solid. He has great hands, great footwork. Um, he, he can get rid of the football as far as getting pitched on a what we call a blood stunt. So he's very solid mechanically. Um, but the thing that, as always, again, continue to be a good decision maker. But the thing for Ty is Ty has to be a more threat one in the football for us. Um, I know going to the Tulsa game last year, going in and say, look, you know, I said we need at least from you. 60 yards rushing out in this game. If we get 60 yards rushing out of you, we will win the game. Gave us, gave us 64. Now, we, we, we want more of that? Yes. Um, so it's going to have to be a better one. And so this spring, we've been working a lot on just different different footwork drills, um, cone drills, a lot of things that, that, that I would do with, with guys who need to work on that. So outside of this ability to run the option, ability to read it, I think he's a great reader on the option. He throws football very well. So he has to be a complete QB for us as far as being able to be a threat to run the football. I'm not saying he's, he needs to make 80 yards run, but he needs to be effective between between the 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 the, 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 the going to blank already. Um, the line of scrimmage to about 15 yards. If he can be really good in that space, I think we'll be pretty good. Uh, first of all, I love your background, by the way. That is that is sweet. Thanks, um, man. You should use that when you're talking to recruits. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> what uh, Ty did just speaking of mechanics, he just told us on our Zoom call with him that he did have a little uh, issue with his throwing of raising up or something like that, and it threw off the trajectory. Can you can you maybe expound on that a little bit as to what little hiccup you wanted to work on to fix his throwing motion? Um, well, as far as his throwing motion, it's just his footwork. Um, Ty was a baseball player, um, a good baseball player. If you watch him throw, he's always displaces his front foot. Instead of transferring his weight, he'll best, he'll pick up his plant foot and kind of really just switch his feet. But now, can he still throw the football and get it there? Yes, he can. But I love to see him keep that front foot planted a lot more and transfer his weight to that front that front foot, keeping his knee bent and throwing. And again, maybe his back leg can come off the ground just a tad, but just keeping his front foot planted and getting the ball where it goes. Because when he does that. That front foot displaces that ball travels on either either goes throw high or goes right in the ground. And last year he struggled on throwing you know, a few routes for us because again his feet were never set. You know, so started on that yesterday. Um, got some drills for uh, for him to work on that specific skill to keep that front foot planted and not displacing that front foot when he steps up over football. I'll move and let it go to. Let's go to uh, Phil Bergman. Coach, uh, we already know a little about Masai and Xavier. What can you tell us about some of the other quarterbacks in the room? Uh, Zachary Branham, Isaiah Knowles, Cam Jordan, for instance. You know, they're, they're young guys. You know, young guys that, um, you know, not been able to play JV games last year. You know, definitely, um, you know, hindered their development. I think coming uh, – just bring, it's going to be an uphill battle for them because, again, you have a starter, um, a solid starter in, in Ty, you know, and, and trying to bring Masai along. Um, Who's going to be a senior? Um, who I expect? Who I expect coming out of spring? You know, should be a solid number two for us. Um, but again, so that's what to go. Those young guys going to bring us, those guys along slowly. I think Isaiah's probably probably the furthest along of, of all of them. Um, when the press um, more athleticism, ain't throws the ball a lot better. So out of the young guys, so Isaiah's probably the furthest furthest along. He'll get some reps this spring, seeing where we can get him by the time spring is over. But but again, they're young and, and not been able to play spring ball. Um, playing JV games last year definitely hurt those guys but we'll continue to develop those guys and hopefully come out of spring well at least at least we get Isaiah to the point to where he can be ready to go for you if you need him in the, uh, in the fall and then uh for Masai uh, being uh, a rising senior this year and also with mm -hmm. Xavier over on the lacrosse field what you want to mm -hmm. see out of him and his development well he came and asked me about that you know and I've always told Masai Masai's biggest problem has always been taking it from the meeting room to the field now in the meeting room, Masai does a great job of being able to recognize things, being able to um, decipher defenses or, or any kind of schemes, you know, answer questions, um, making chess. But when we get to the field sometime, he struggled a lot with that. And um, you know, and I've always been up front with him about that. And he understands that. You know, so so this spring, I told him, so, Masai, this is a huge spring for you. I mean, you need to decide this spring that I'm gonna I'm gonna solidify myself, you know, as a guy that we can put in a football game and feel good everything in the game with. So I challenge him in that way of taking what he knows in the room to the football field and being able to, when the defense changes up on us, be able to recognize it and get us in the right play. And going against our defense, you're going to get a lot of work out of us. Our defense changes all the time. 
you know, so we, we did a lot of work at it. And I'm expecting him to come out of spring, you know, being able to go into the fall camp ready to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. John Schofield. Hey, Coach. So I asked uh, Niamat and Ty the same question. You know, the schedule has come out for the coming year. You know, we've made a lot about the slow starts that took place, taking on a very tough BYU team during a very odd and bizarre season, taking off, taking on a very tough Marshall team, followed by an emotional game on the 9-11 anniversary against Air Force. A little bit of an easier start with no disrespect to a, to a great team from the CAA. Uh, but you get to take on Delaware to start the year. Do you think having an easier start to the season with this schedule will kind of help you with the, you know, setting the tone for the new year? Well, you know, the first game is always going to be important. And I can tell you right now, man, all my years here, we've never gone to that first game taking anybody lightly. You know, we, we will never forget who we are. Uh, we know who we are. We understand who we are. Um, our, we're focused on us and who we are. And, yeah, what can we do? To make sure that we come out in that first game ready to go, um, you know, taking on all cylinders, you know, we're, we're fully loaded and uh, and playing fast. So that comes down to to looking at ourselves, what we're doing in practice, um, what can we do different, what have, what have we done the last two years, and I don't know if it's, if it's so much who we play, just a matter of we just got to make sure going to fall camp that we make if it's, are we doing too much for our guys? I'm going to the first game, you know, where we got too much uh, in our game plan. Maybe maybe need to scale things back. We just got to make sure that we go into our first game with a clear, a, a clear game plan. We have a, we have a great fall camp. Our kids are ready to play. So, what, what, whether it's Delaware, BYU, or Marshall, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of us getting ready to play and coming out and, and firing all cylinders. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll make another trip around. Feel free to ask a, you know, we'll we'll go to three questions this time if you have them. Uh, Mike James. Um, Ken mentioned yesterday that Kai Rojas was getting a look at quarterback. Um, and this happens every once in every few years where you'll move someone from another position to just give them a kind of a look. Um, what would you need to see out of someone, just generally speaking, to, to get it to think, you know what, we're going to stick with this guy at quarterback? Um, and in, with Kai in particular, especially considering that he is expected to be a big contributor um, at ABAC. It's a matter of. For me, it's always watching him run the offense, watching him run the option. Does he look comfortable doing it? Uh, throwing the football, is, is he an effective thrower? I'm not looking for, again, for a kid to have a big arm, but can he throw play action for us? I'm watching Kai yesterday. The kid is very comfortable. Um, he throws football very well, and he's, and he's a good athlete. And we'll give him about, about a week to see how he does. Um, also, get, get him under live list against our defense, get him in a live period there, and uh, see what he can do. So. Yeah, so just, just an experiment that we're doing right now, just trying to make sure that we're trying to get our best players in the right positions. You know, he was a quarterback in high school. He had asked about it, you know, prior to even last season about playing quarterback. So he felt uh, we, should, we should give him a shot. When you look at the roster and, and consider which guys to, to move around, what, what do you look for when, when you're thinking about who you might want to give a shot at the position? Well, that position, um, you got to be a good runner. And I think last year, he's probably the one A-back that we had. And people might not think is that that made people miss. Um, we had some really, really good runs. Made some guys miss from Cincinnati and from Houston, two of the probably most athletes that, that we play. So it comes down, that's one thing, be, being able to make a run, make a play with your, with your feet. But also just what's different about the kid? Does he have that mentality? Does he have that quarterback aura about himself? And uh, if you watch that, Kai is very, very quiet, but the kid works extremely hard. He's, he's extremely bright, smart kid, good football player, you know, and he's always in the right at, at the right time. The same thing that we try to do with Chance, try to move Chance in there because Chance had, had all those same qualities. So it's just a matter of, of seeing the kid, does he have those quarterback qualities and giving them a shot? Hey, Coach. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, I know you have very, very limited time with Xavier in meetings. What can you do with him when you do get him in those meetings that, that can help him while he's still not on the practice field with you? Like today, I think every question I asked was directed at him. Just, just making sure that, that he's staying sharp. Um, and, we, and we spoke and he said, Coach, I'm going to make every effort I can to, to get to, to all meetings. Um, I'll communicate with you uh, if I can. But the main thing is making sure that, that he's always up to date on on what we're doing offensively to make sure that he understands, still remembers the rules. He still understands our schemes. 
um, what our checks may be in certain situations. And today, he was pretty good on all of them. So I was, I was very pleased with him. With what he does in lacrosse, do you look at that as a positive to help his open field game? Open field game, but also just, just for him to get, you know, his confidence back. You know, um, I know last year in the way it ended, you know, he was very, very frustrated. Um, it, was, it was hard for the kid, you know, Scott, Scott down on himself. But I know the cross is a, is, is a huge part of who he is. He's a really, really good player, you know. So going over there and playing and, and having fun and scoring some goals, make it, get, get his mojo back. So when he does come back, you know, he's back to that kid that, that was with the confidence, you know, with the swagger. And that's what we're looking for and hoping for. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Got it. Wags. So what was your thought about Xavier, you know, playing lacrosse? I mean, do you feel like this is going to cost him? I mean, that he's going to, you know, this is valuable time lost for football and developing. You, know, it, you, you think about that, but by the same time, try to do what's best for, for our team and what's best for that, for that young man. Um, you know, is coming to spring ball important or, or is letting him go play the cross where, again, a sport that he's really, really good at, that he can go over and, and, and help us, you know, help our lacrosse team and be a part of the team, but also when he comes back, getting that confidence back. And uh, because again, if it was, you can see it in the kids, in the kids' face, in his eyes, that he was struggling, he was struggling with, with his confidence. And we just felt it's best for this young man to be able to let him go play a sport that's very important to him. And, uh, and which is just help him get get his get his mental state right, you know, and again get his confidence back and, and uh, get his swagger back. This thing was important for the kid more than anything else. And obviously, Coach Neumont mentioned that with Xavier being you know not participating in spring camp, there's an opportunity for Masai to get more repetitions. Mm -hmm. What does Masai Maynard have to do to show you that he deserves more of an opportunity to possibly be the backup behind Ty? You know, Masai's always done things well. Masai's throws the football. He's probably, um, and Ty might get mad about this, but I think he throws the ball better than Ty. <laughs> he has a really, really good arm, tight spiral, and he's a solid runner. Masai's problem's always been taking things from the medium room to the football field. Um, he, he's always struggled from, from, from the mental state of being able to look and see, hey, what do I check here? I can't get us in the right place. So for him, this spring, that's going to be huge for him. And again, He's going to get a lot of tests because our defense is going to be moving around, changing things up, you know, so he'll have an opportunity to show me that if he's in the game and people switch up on us, that I can get us into the right play. And if he can, he'll definitely be a guy that's going to be a solid backup for us. And uh, Coach Neumont was mentioning that Coach Peterson, coming from the fisher DeBerry option background, mm -hmm. and which is different, you all, you and Kenny are Paul Johnson disciples, um, he, he said he's added some things. What, have you enjoyed talking ball with Coach Peterson, who's an old salt? I've talked to Coach Peterson for, for years that, uh, that we've talked. Um, he's a good friend. Again, to me, you know, outside of football, he's just a great person. He's a great person. Again, I guess he is, he is an old soul, but he brings a lot of wisdom, you know, uh, to our meetings. And a lot of the language that we speak is all the same, just maybe different numbering systems. But again, it's all the same language. And like anything else, you know, we all want to win. We know it's important to win. We got to be able to run the football and uh, be good at it. You know, so he's brought he's brought a lot of wisdom uh, to, to the room, but also just again, just being a great person in the room. That's that's what we're looking for. Being able to fit into the room. Um, he's, he's a great husband and a great father. Obviously, his, his son played here. You know, so that's that's what's been great for me. Just having a great guy in the meeting. Bill Bergman. Coach, just one for me. You've been doing this a while. What's your favorite thing about coaching spring football? My favorite thing about coaching spring football, um, it's just the challenge of, of, of just getting better. You set your goals going into spring and just trying to find a way of accomplishing that with only 15 practices. You know, um, that's that's always the biggest goal. Can we do it? Um, can I get, can I find a solid, you know, one and two quarterback in a spring and be able to go into the fall? going to the fall feeling good about that you know so for me it's, it's always a challenge of it um being able to try to answer those questions in 15 days and uh and getting it done thank you mm -hmm. john schofield last one for me coach it was great mm -hmm. seeing you at a bunch of the home games as uh navy men's basketball made their run you know has there been a feeling in the building about all the success the other sports have had as we went through the fall and the winter 
Obviously, the football team adding to the star count with a huge win over uh, in the Army-Navy game. You know, what, what's the energy been like in the building with all these other sports and the success they've had over Army? You know, we're, we're all one big family, and we all, we all root for the other sports. Um, again, it's not just about football here or any other sport. It's, it's all one big Navy family. And, again, for me, I love basketball. I love the month of March. I mean, I'm, I'm a March Madness psycho. I, I love uh, watching the game, supporting our basketball team, the cross teams, um, men's and women's teams. It's all about who we are. You know, again, we're a big family. And I think, you know, the success that we've had can only make everybody feel better. Because again, winning helps a lot. Man. Winning helps a lot. It helps cure a lot of things. But the way a football season was for us last year, winning that last game made a, made a huge difference for, for a lot of reasons. You know, so it's just, again, I love to keep this going as, as long as we possibly can. And it's always good to, again, have everybody winning, everybody celebrating. And also getting that getting that star is all the shoes, my man. Thanks, Coach. And nothing wrong with uh, rooting for uh, Villanova on Thursday. All right. <laughs> Anyone have anything else, Coach? As a final uh, follow up, who's your final four? My final four, I, man. I'm I because I was I was on obviously in spring break, with, with my, so I I get to do my bracket. But I'm picking. I'll just pick my winner. Okay. I'm going with Houston. I don't know what it is about. I'm going with Houston, man. They can play defense. Again, they might not score a lot or a great shooting team, but if you can't score against them, they got a chance, you know. So great, they're, they're a great team. I'm going with Houston.